sorry about that. So I want to acknowledge that COVID-19, um, the COVID-19 has caused us to alter our procedures and we have invited residents of the region to participate in this meeting virtually. As we know, um, Governor Walls has declared a peacetime emergency in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and the council has determined that it is not practical or prudent to conduct an in-person committee meeting for reasons stated in the governor's emergency executive order. And so accordingly, my council members will participate in this meeting and also committee members, uh, advisory members will participate in this meeting by phone or other electronic means. And this equity advisory committee will be conducted in that manner under Minnesota statute section 13D.021. So, before we call this meeting to order, there are a few quick reminders and guidelines about WebEx events and the virtual meeting process. So you will remain muted uh, unless speaking. If on phone and computer, only unmute one device when speaking. Please announce your name before speaking. All votes will be conducted by roll call. Communicate with each other only through speaking. Only use chat function to address technical difficulties, such as if you can't hear or be heard, or if you have a question. You can type your question in the chat, but avoid having a conversation for transparency purposes. So use the raised hand feature if you wish to speak. If that doesn't work, type in the chat, uh, I have a question. For your information, this meeting is being recorded and will be made available online. Our staff, Kit Driscoll or Irina, will be monitoring the chat, so reach out to them if you are having technical issues, and um, they will put their cell phone number in the chat. So we'll call this meeting to order for the Equity Advisory Committee meeting for December 2020. The time now is 6.13 p.m. Um, so, um, I don't think, uh, Irina, can you do the roll call? I don't think we have a quorum, but let's go ahead and do the roll call. Thank you, Madam Chair. So for the first roll call, I will be calling uh, all names by last name, then first name. All the subsequent roll calls will just be by last name. So as I call out your name, please mention if you are here. Locke, Lenise, Boland, Andres, Cole Deserland, Goldstein Moses, Leah, Gonzalez Francisco, Jenkins Nicholas, Chai Lee, I'm sorry, Lee Chai, help if I can read, Lewis Sonia, Luceni Michael, McDonald, Edward. Here. Miller, Juliana. Wei, T. Here. Paul, Richard. Rudolph, Sarah. Present. Sheikh, Mohammed. Sitate Munene, Melina. Here. Sterner, Philip. Ulysses, Mia. Irvina Davis, Anita. Here. Thank you. Um, we're, go ahead. We're, at, we're at eight. Oh, we're at eight, so we do have a core. Wonderful. So, because we do have a quorum now, um, we'll go ahead and uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes, uh, sorry, the approval of the tonight's agenda. And so, before we do that, I have an adjustment uh, to make to the agenda. I think I would like to uh, insert an item at the top of the agenda for uh, the OEO director just to give us an update on some of the changes in the, um, in the OEO department. So right now I will, um, I guess, I'll entertain a motion to 
I would, so I would like to propose an amendment to the agenda for us before we approve the agenda so that we can add that item to the agenda. Or if somebody can propose that motion, that would be wonderful. This is Sarah Rudolph, so moved. Thank you. Is there a second? <laughs> this is Anita Rina Davis, second. Thank you, Anita. Is there any discussion on that item? If there's no further discussion on that item, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Sorry, uh, Irina, do we need to vote by roll call on that item too? <laughs> yes, please. Oh, okay, sorry. Let's go ahead. Please <laughs> call this. Block. Boland. Cole. Goldstein Moses. Gonzalez. Jenkins. Lee. Lewis. Here. Buseni. McDonald. I approve. Miller. Way. Approve. Paul. Rudolph. Aye. Shake. Sitate Munene. Aye. Sterner. Ulysses. Irvina Davis. Aye. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're on mute, Madam Chair. All right. So thank you. So we we'll, can add that uh, after we approve the agenda and we approve the minutes. So the next item agenda will be uh, approval of the agenda as amended. And uh, all those in favor? Please call the roll call, sorry. Approve the agenda as amended. So move uh, approval of the agenda as amended, Madam Chair. Thank you. Second. Can we get a roll call, please, Irina? Yes. Thank you. Sorry, Thank you. I was writing. Uh, block. Okay. Approve. Uh, Boland. Cole, Goldstein Moses, Gonzalez, Jenkins, Lee, Lewis, Luceni, McDonald, Approve, Miller, Way, Approved, Paul, Rudolph. Aye. Shake. Sitate Munene. Aye. Sterner. Ulysses. Irvina Davis. Aye. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So the agenda is approved. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from the November 17, 2020 meeting. We have a motion to approve the minutes from the November 2020 meeting. Madam Chair, I move approval, Edward McDonald. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on that item? If there's no discussion, please take the roll call to, uh, for the approval of the minutes. Block. Approve. Boland. Cole. Goldstein Moses. Gonzalez. Jenkins. Lee. Lewis. Senny, McDonald, approve. Miller, 
Sway? Approved. Paul? Rudolph? Aye. Shake? Sitate Munene? Aye. Sterner? Ulysses? Irvina Davis? Aye. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, sorry to interrupt. Council Member Gonzalez is on call in user four on the phone. If you want to unmute him, he'll be able to um, uh, speak. Thank you. Got it. Can you hear me now? Yes. Apologies, Mr. Chair. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Irina. Um, for the next item on the agenda, I will invite the OPO director, as we have adjusted the agenda, uh, Sarantia Jordan, will come and give us an update about uh, some changes in the OEO department. Thank you. Hello, everybody. This is Sai uh, Jordan, Director of Equal Opportunity. So we have uh, sent out a communication to you. If you have not received that, please let me know directly, and I'll make sure that you get a copy of it, letting you know about some changes that we're making in OEO. And so I wanted to address that with you a little more specifically. I have been involved in the EAC for quite some time now since I've been here and continue to work with the staff on their support of the EAC and the work. That will continue. So in the interim, you can reach out to me directly, and I'll be supporting the um, EAC as a liaison. Ashanti Payne has also been involved as the assistant director in several of the meetings, and so he as well is accessible to be able to communicate with about any questions that you have or any uh, work support that you need for EAC. Arena Anderson has been supporting you for uh, a good part of this year, and she will continue in that role as the executive assistant to support the EAC. So in the past, we've had about four to five staff supporting the EAC. Um, oftentimes, we've had interns that have also contributed to your work and helped to be a liaison with you. And so as we move forward, we'll currently have three members, but that will be certainly sufficient staffing to be able to meet the needs of EAC. And if you have any questions about that over time, again, certainly reach out to me. Let me know your thoughts and any comments that you might have about how we can do better in supporting you. And so um, that's one of the changes that are happening within our office. We have uh, several other changes that will be ongoing. There'll be a few uh, reporting changes within OEO. Um, for those of you that we haven't presented fully about what the work is in the Office of Equal Opportunity, we cover a number of the areas around compliance and equity and inclusion for the council. So we're under the regional administrative office and we're support service to the other four divisions as well as to the regional administrative division itself. And so we do work in compliance around um, investigations, around uh, Metro Mobility Appeals. We do, of course, affirmative action planning that you've heard in partnership with HR and taking that plan this year and moving it to workforce equity, taking it beyond the regulatory compliance that we're obligated to do. We also uh, do the ADA work with the council around the Title II for our programs and services. So we were involved in conducting the self-evaluation for the council just two years ago and putting together a transition plan for the work that the council has ahead of it. We'll continue in that role. We also do the Title VI work around uh, programs and services for the council. We do the small business certification, and we do have an equity component and inclusion component in the work that we do. So not only do we handle the disadvantaged business enterprise, the federal component, we also have our own internal council um, goals that we set around underutilized businesses using our own local and state funds of the council. We have um, oversight around subrecipients for the council, and we're looking to enhance the work that we're doing around that. Um, I want to think if I'm missing a couple areas, if so, chime in, Ashanti, as well, if there are a couple that I'm missing. So we have a broad breadth of issues and work that we do within the council. There will be um, a number of changes within our department. We are working on a 90-day restructure plan 
And so as we change our organizational chart, I'll be able to send that out to you and share that with you as well. The work itself will not change. What we'll be looking to do is elevate the way that we do our work within the council. And we're also going to be adding on another unit. So we're going to be, uh, we'll have a more focused intention around small business engagement and development too as we support the increase of spend and contracting with Metropolitan Council. So those are a few of the quick highlights and I'll entertain a few questions. I'll let you know directly that I won't be speaking to any private personnel data, but certainly any questions about what the work is itself and how we intend to move it forward. I want to be open and transparent with you. Thank you, uh, Sai. So yeah, we can entertain a couple of questions if there are any. So Sai, this is Edward McDonald. Thank you for the information. Is this um, a part of just shortage of local aid and the need to reduce staffing within your division? So if I, co-chairs and members, if I understand the question correctly, if it has to do with aid, federal aid, and I'm sorry, I, could, I couldn't hear you very clearly, so I had to turn up my volume it, and reduce the staffing. Does it, does it have anything to do with just the, you know, um, revenues uh, adjustments the council needs to make considering the climate uh, appropriations, that kind of thing? No, just the opposite. Actually, um, Chair Zelli and the regional administrator uh, acting, uh, Mary Bogey, both support the work that we need to do in equal opportunities. So we are actually adding staff. We'll be adding two additional extended, um, extended temp staff for a while. What we're planning to do is um, up staff so we can work on what our strategies and our intentions are and see how we should be right staff to support the uh, council and its needs, but also to be able to make a real impact around the region. So we'll be adding some staff as we move forward. Oh, that's great news. Thank you. Um, Juliana, I think you had a question. I think there's a question in the chat. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Hey, you, Juliana. Go ahead. Uh, my my question um, for the director is: I I um, also heard that uh, three equity managers were terminated, and uh, uh, the question is: you also spoke a little bit about your you you hope to elevate the work. So the specific question I have is. What is your specific plan to elevate the equity work with um, fewer staff in these key strategic roles? And so we will be filling the position for the needs that we have within the Office of Equal Opportunity. And so the work will continue if that helps. And so the work that we're doing in our investigation resolution will continue as we're looking at our processes and our practices, the work will be moving forward and adding this new uh, business engagement and uh, development unit. And then the work will be moving forward in equity with regard to supporting you in EAC as a liaison and also continuing the equity strategy and framework. We'll continue in our role of supporting the equity change teams across the council and also in moving the uh, strategic plan for it that the council members have had a heavy role in developing for the council that just uh, updated the draft recently. So those are just a few areas of the work that we'll be continuing to move forward. Any Thank other you. questions or thoughts? And I'll offer again, if anyone has any questions of me and you want to talk offline, feel free to reach out to me as well. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for the update. Uh, 
Um, so the next item on our agenda is uh, what uh, the purpose for the meeting today. Um, the committee every year, the EAC plans and sets goals for the following year. And uh, this is crucial planning that we all take part in. And that's where we set aside uh, today's meeting to be able to do that. This plan shapes the focus of the work that we're going to do uh, as a committee towards equity at the council and in the region. So tonight, uh, I think we all received the materials uh, from our current draft material for the current work plan. I think uh, we have an updated uh, draft work plan that uh, has just been shared. Um, I'll just been shared uh, on the screen. So let me uh, set this up a little bit and then uh, uh, Chair Gonzalez can chime in too. So um, as a committee, um, it has been a challenging year. Uh, we had new members coming to the committee and then we had the pandemic and I think we missed a couple of meetings. And these are some of the priorities uh, for 2020. We had identified priorities in the areas of affordable housing, public transportation, accessibility, and in internal working of the council. So um, I think in assessing uh, how far we've gone in terms of our work plan and priority areas, I think that, uh, you know, my sense is that um, we have, there's not one area where we can say yes. You know, we checked all these boxes and so, and based on the conversations that we have had uh, as a committee and how the work is flowing and some of the stuff that is coming up, I think that, uh, and from our discussion to at the standing committee meeting, in setting the, the agenda, that uh, the feeling was that most of these priorities will continue to be of interest uh, to the committee. I think the only one change is uh, one, the one metro partnership that uh, has been introduced uh, in place of the accessibility accessibility priority. And so the purposes of today's conversation, um, what we thought we could do is to uh, go through each of these priority areas with, this, with, a, uh, with a proposal uh, as presented, the draft uh, work one is presented this where we where the work uh, where the work is so far. So the few changes, and I think that we will go through it. Is we will I know we do have subcommittees for each of these uh, categories, and maybe it will be best. Um, you know, if we have the also for each priority area, if we have the subcommittee you know, kind of lead and give, you know, some feedback about where they felt they have reached and also if there's some items missing from this updated, you know, work plan, I think we can just we can discuss that and see if we if we want to adapt the work plan as is or even continue to um you know to give comments and feedback about where we feel are some areas of improvement or some areas we can, you know Changes to the to the work plan as proposed currently. And uh, is there anything you want to add to that before we start the discussion? Um, uh, thank you, and my apologies for the technical issues I had to connect via phone. Um, I think that this is just a way of uh, making sure that we are more um, impactful uh, within the the limitations of the. Uh, the time and commitment of all the EAC members. So what I what I suggested with this modified um, draft was um, ways in which areas in which we can have the most impact uh, in view of the changing situation since last year. So uh, you know there might be some some scope of the actual uh, nuts and bolts implementation, but I think that having a narrower focus will be helpful for the work of the EAC. So that's that's the purpose behind uh, our suggested uh, 
uh, focus areas and and within the focus areas the actual action items to to tackle by the EAC so thank you And uh, what I will add, I mean, as usual, we do have the one, and uh, if any, if there any, if there's anything that comes up uh, during the course of the year that the uh, committee would like to address, as always, the committee, uh, we usually set our own agenda. We would be able to um, to add anything to our agenda if those an item of interest that came up um, during the year. Are there any questions so far or comments? So I see Anan, I think um Irina Jakarno, did you send a copy of this document to everyone also by email? I haven't um, had a chance yet, but I absolutely okay. can. Yeah. No, okay, that's okay. I think we can just follow, yeah, and or we can follow through uh, through the screen. So if there are folks, I think the way we thought about it is if uh, we can start with affordable housing, and for affordable housing uh, last year we had uh, three areas. We had the area of holding regional convenings and affordable housing, and um, the strategy was to prioritize and promote affordable housing in the region. And uh, co hosted other council members and partners, community groups, uh, some meetings to ask people from underrepresented communities uh, what they see as the causes of um, drivers of affordable housing crisis, and then to also promote the need and support necessary to produce affordable housing. We also had another item in regards to the um, LCA, which is. Um, not included in this uh, in this updated in this updated uh, work plan. Um, I think we've had some visits from the LCA staff. Um, I know that there was a they were working on updating uh, the their criteria for the LCA this year for what they're going to use for 2021, and I know the period uh, to impact that uh, passed. And what I requested from the LCS staff is also just to provide us a memo to see where, you know, where they landed, uh, where they landed that at least so that we can have that information with the committee. And then the other item was the housing policy plan update, which I believe um, the, the council will begin uh, working on the community development department to continue to uh, begin working on the housing policy plan update, I think, in, in 2021. So that is what uh, we have uh, on the current work plan, and I'll leave it open right now, especially to members of the affordable housing uh, committee to be able to add further conversation on on that in terms of affordable housing, and also uh, share some of the work that the subcommittee has done so far and what uh, and what is missing in that work. So first, I have a question: Is this is the document clear? Is everybody able to read this document on the screen? Uh, this is T. We yes, it is clear. Welcome, Chair Gonzalez. Finally. Yes. So are there any other members? I know I have participated in the sub in the housing subcommittee. Are there any other members of the housing subcommittee who would like to give input around the area of affordable housing? Is that a uh, strategy or a priority that we want to continue to to keep? And um, are the strategies uh, are the spelled out UC strategies 
good as they are, or is there anything missing, or are there any changes that we want to make to that? So this is, if, if I may, just to, to remind folks that, um, you know, one of the, the uh, organizational changes that, that we are trying to implement is having the, the subcommittees take, take the lead on, on certain areas as far as processing the information and coming up with, uh, recommendations and, and, and other things to submit to the whole of the EAC. So, um, you know, the work plan should also reflect the interest of the folks from the subcommittees. So if the folks that are on the specific housing subcommittee, for example, think that uh, the priority areas within housing that we have identified do not match what they think should we should be doing that's that's why we want this discussion to happen so uh there's a, there's a reason why folks are in the specific subcommittees that they are into it's because they have a an interest or a subject matter expertise in that particular area so this is the this is the time in which your input is needed so again um so your uh, interest and your knowledge is reflected in this working document in addition to your work on the specific subcommittees. So um, this is Edward. Um, I'm not sure where there's a mention of equity in all of this, but um, I suppose if, if I, you know, read and and guess intentions with this, uh, I can make a justification in all of the verbiage in it. But um, if, if we're not going to do that, then maybe one of the things we need is to have the Met Council provide us some kind of analysis of the status of housing on the continuum of housing in order for us to have a, at least a quantitative analysis of what the need is across the region as it relates to the housing continuum. And that is from shelter facilities to home ownership, and then uh, internally in each one of those sections of the continuum, uh, some analysis of, of um, who occupy that space. You know, what, what are the demographics in home ownership? What are the demographics in, um, in I think Edward, Edward lost you. Well, one thing as far as housing is concerned, while well, Edward comes back, um, and um, Sai uh, was mentioning this to us uh, before, is this, again, I, I'm still struggling to remember the name of the, the group that was created and that is already working on housing issues, on affordable housing issues. Um, so, there definitely will be an overlap between what those folks are doing and what this uh, subcommittee and the EAC might be looking at. Um, so as far as data and information is concerned, maybe those folks have some of that information already available. Um, Sai, can you you know, just repeat what you just explained earlier about the, the, the working group? Yes, one of the areas where we will continue to support um, from OEL's perspective is your connection with the council members and the work of the council that's ongoing that you would have an interest in. So 
there is a council member or group from the bigger council group that uh, has a focus on affordable housing. And I'm aware that that group came to the sub, or at least uh, council member Chambliss came to the um, EAC's affordable housing subcommittee last Monday and spoke with you. And so what I committed to um, the co-chairs was to get more information about the parameters of that group if it wasn't already presented to you, and then also to understand uh, what the timing and goals are for the council members work group. But if there's anyone on the committee who may have attended or otherwise received some documents directly from council member channels about that, they may be helpful to your discussion as well. Okay. Anything else? Oops. Any questions about the rest of the the draft um uh priority areas for the work plan, the work plan priority areas for next year? I think that we've just done a uh, whole thing, so probably we can scroll up and look at the public transportation. Okay, hold on one second, please. I'm having appear to be having some difficulties. So just one second. Okay. While you're scrolling, Arena, my name is Sarah Rudolph. I am a co-chair of the Transportation Subcommittee along with T and yep. um just to offer a little bit of background, um, the three priorities listed in the proposed work plan are carryovers from last year. I'll talk about them when we can see them on the screen. Um, and then we're, we've decided to add a fourth one, which is working directly with uh, Metro Transit and um, Leslie Richards, who presented our last meeting to address equity within the Metro Transit envelope. So really working more um, directly on specific initiatives there. Uh, so, Irina, you don't have the right screen share. No, I, I know I, the, oh, the okay. document that I had only, for whatever reason, saved one page. So, oh, okay. I'm trying to get the, trying I can, to get the I can help. Text. Do you want to make me presenter? I'm pretty sure I can move to the second page. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> it was uh, this one? Nope, it was... No. The updated draft work plan. Oh, it's not in here anymore. Did you, rem did you remove it? I did because I'm bringing in the other one. All right. Sounds good. Yes. Yes, this will work again. Thank you, everyone. Sorry about that. I, I see. Uh, yep, you got control. If you want to go ahead and yeah. click to page two, you, you can't scroll down, but yeah. There, you go. there we go. Magic. Oh, okay. So we're not able to see all three. Okay. So go ahead, Sarah. Thank you. So these are the three priorities that are carryovers from last year. Um, number one, which you cannot see, it's public, I'm sorry, transportation pub policy decision-making, learning how the council and uh, 
Metro Transit and MTS transportation policy decisions are made and how those most impacted are given a voice and agency in the process. Number two is transportation tracking systems, just understanding a little more about what they, what they actually track and report, um, how the council utilizes those findings and how those findings are shared with the public if they are. The number three goal is building a relationship with the Transportation Advisory Board. It's a bit of an overstatement perhaps, but really just understanding a little bit more about the tab and the goals that overlap with the EAC priorities so the idea behind these three goals is really just for us at the EAC to have a better understanding of the world of transportation as viewed by the Met Council. And then that will help to inform our kind of strategy and understanding about this and our role in it moving forward. And then the fourth uh, goal, as I mentioned earlier, is really to work more directly on specific equity related things with Metro Transit specifically as a follow-up to the um, presentation that was shared with us last month. So these three are more about learning, and then the fourth one is more about acting. Sure, so if I may again, uh, so the Transportation, Public Transportation Committee, um, oh yeah, guy, do you guys feel like was, there were some items you were able to work on in this past year? Mm -hmm. So um, just due to the pandemic and my own family situation, I had to take a big leave from the um, EAC. So I was not involved probably from spring through the summer and just rejoined had the opportunity to rejoin last month. So um, this subcommittee has not been particularly active. However, last week, T and I were able to meet um, with Sai for a very informative meeting during which we kind of really shared these goals with her, situated kind of where we see the subcommittee going. And um, both of us, I think everybody gained a better understanding of kind of what that relationship looks like moving forward. Correct. Correct. And, and I think uh, what Sarah and I were thinking is in 2021 is I think we're both excited in what we're going to be able to find out and learn and to add to our, um, our um, knowledge about transit and transportation. But also I wanted to say to all the committee members is we we could use one or two more people on this subcommittee. So if anybody is interested, let us know. Definitely let us know. Okay, so um so thank you, uh, thank you for that. Um, so that so that means that you, you know, would have four items. I know in our, our conversation previous meeting, we were talking about um, you know really narrowing the focus uh, for each of these priority items still further because just from the experience and the limited capacity that we have as a committee and uh, the added. Uh, requirement to participate in subcommittees and added uh, time requirement on folks. But uh, I was trying to look through this again, trying to figure out since your top, since your first two items are more about learning, I was trying to see if we could put those together. I mean, the building relationship with the Tablet Transportation Advisory Board, I think, I mean, that's fine. It's a relationship building. We all actually relationship building relationships. Uh, the folks around here, uh, but then so um, I guess what we would need to add is the work that uh, you just articulated with um, on the equity work that that Leslie presented on. And uh, have you thought about what the ESC strategy would be? We are reviewing that and don't have details at this time, but understand okay. that that's going to be kind of our next step is coming up with a very specific 
strategy forward with them. Right, and in more detail. Okay. All right, thank you. So the next item we'll move to is the one metro partnerships. Francisco, do you want to lead that discussion for us? Yeah, and basically this is uh, some high level ideas that I, I thought that um, in view of everything that has happened uh, with uh, COVID, with uh, George Floyd's murder and all the uh, the impact on um, our communities since for almost a year now that it has exacerbated the dismal uh, trends that we already had. So I thought that there's we need to be more uh, involved with what's going on at the community level. Uh, and using the resources of the Med Council to support the rebuilding of, of the communities, right? So one way in which I thought that could happen would be uh, creating uh, more intentional uh, and formalized partnerships with uh, folks from those communities, especially folks that have particular uh, positions or that work with um, organizations that have um, knowledge and, and expertise and that are working with with uh, with communities with BIPOC communities so that's that's the idea behind it what I uh, indicated were just some uh, examples of what I would like to see but by all means these are not uh, comprehensive and, and uh, it's just suggestions of how to uh, implement that that thought process. So basically just what I would like to have is uh, ways in which uh, the, the community, the Med Council unit should work with uh, community organizations and other agencies supporting entrepreneurs, employment and skills building because I see that as, as a key need of the community, just creating wealth in other words. So again, that's just a general suggestions without going into the details of how to do it. Um, and the other um, uh, suggestion is to, you know, the specific targets and metrics uh, with uh, employment in mind. Again, uh, just to create those partnerships with folks that can, um, uh, that we can have more impact in creating employment, creating supporting businesses, and also the idea of of building those direct channels with, with the community. Um, and that also piggybacks too with some of the suggestions on the uh, next uh, priority of council operations. But um, while they, there's overlap, I just saw that having one specific uh, priority of working with partnerships by itself, I thought that was important. And also on the operations, it would be more like how would some of those initiatives look like once we implement them on the ground? So um, those are my suggestions, again, to build those partnerships with, with uh, the communities of color that have been so heavily impacted uh, in the last year or so. So uh, one last thing, as far as the implementation of what exa how exactly this will look like, that's it's it's open to suggestions and to the interests of of the folks in the EAC to see how they want to implement this uh, at the at the grassroots level. So I just wanted to flag something. I know I think Edward is communicating that he's trying to connect by a phone and he's not able to. 
I just wanted to flag that uh, who's all to so work with order um offering check assistance. I don't know how to address that. I'll reach I'll reach out and give them my cell phone number in the chat. No, I'm okay. on now, but I just need Oh you are on. on, okay. When I speak I get cut off internally, but that's fine. Oh. Sorry about I, that. I don't we're not I don't we're not controlling the mute that way, so I'm not sure what's happening there. Oh, okay. We can hear you now, Edward. Did you want to uh, go ahead? No, I, that subject matter is passed, Madam Chair. So I will. Um, I'll talk to Francisco offline um, about a couple ideas I have that that could have gone into the housing piece. On this subject matter, though, I think we'd be remiss not to um, somehow look at. Uh, you know, internal opportunities at the council itself, as well as underutilization in the contracting area. I know that Asante and and other folks, um, Serena, I think her name is, is, is working to, um, you know, shore that up. But on the job creation side, um, oftentimes our communities are just are discouraged from using those avenues for employment opportunities and uh, extended relationships. So I see a lot of benefit in, in forging those relationships to have those conversations. But at the end of the day, um, uh, uh, and, and I'm sure this new staff and new organization will 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 uh, do a better job uh, in the EEO area of ensuring uh, utilization of diverse communities uh, in their contracting as well as in the employment. Um, and that speaks to affirmative action and all of our contract procurement stuff. And, and, and I think we should at least look at that. Um, it, it's hard to push others to do better if we're not doing the best. Uh, so, do you, um, I think, yeah, and when we get to the Council of Operations, I think some of that might be covered by Edward. I mean, but if it's not, we can, or if we need to expand on that for the next priority area, then we can just let that too. Okay. Yeah. Madam Chair, uh, Leah has joined and she has her hand up. Oh, I apologize. Go ahead, Leah. <laughs> I just put it up, so nothing to apologize for. I'm here. Um, one thing that this area of the One Metro Partnerships makes me think about is um, there may be some opportunity with the CARES Act funds for some really creative flexibility and intentional community engagement. And so as council is making plans for how to use its CARES funds. I hope that thinking through partnerships and collaboration and community engagement would be part of it, and that might be a place where we can have some influence. And maybe even beyond the Met Council um, resources, but potentially how they're working with cities and counties to think about how to structure their CARES Act expenditures. And and that's exactly the kinds of suggestions that I, I think uh, I was looking for in this particular area, just seeing ways in which we can partner more effectively, uh, you know, with, with communities and maybe, and also with other agencies too. So, yeah, thank you. Um, any other suggestions or comments on this particular priority? If not, we can move maybe to the to the last one, the council operations. Okay. 
So for console operations, I know in the, uh, Lear and Anita, especially earlier on, I know you'll uh, hit the ground running and done I've done quite some substantial work on that. I know at some point there was some request, uh, you know, from information from the HR director. I can't remember to the HR director. I'm not sure if that ever can through, but all in all, I think we can start off. Uh, if one or actually both of you just wants to, uh, you know, give a brief summary of what the committee worked on and where you feel, feel you we are at with this uh, priority area. Okay. Julia, are you on? Yes, I am. Do you, do you want to start or I can start? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you may start. All right. This is Anita. Um, gosh, we've had our paperwork in for a long time now. Uh, ours was uh, procurement. We worked on procurement, hiring, and retention of the Met Council, and uh, we created some goals that they mm -hmm. were, that the Met Council would attract and retain a skilled, diverse, inclusive, and respectful workforce, and identify and address systemic workplace barriers. Uh, some of the strategies are that we would work with the human resources and affirmative action officer to identify the challenges and uh, eliminate the barriers of recruitment and retention and employment. Um, providing, uh, looking at providing an intercultural development inventory assessment and training for all the leaders within the Met Council. Uh, changing uh, the hiring and selection practices if necessary, uh, making diversity and inclusion part of the Metropolitan Council strategic plan, and to continue to participating in diversity-related job fairs, um, create a Metropolitan Council diversity committee to include members from all the work locations and departments. And let's see, anything you want to add on the Hiring and retention, Julia? Uh, no, thank you for asking. Okay. okay. Um, the next one would be the procurement. And um, our goals would be to increase the proportion of contracts that are given to businesses owned by people of color, people who are Native American, and other groups who are undercapitalized or underrepresented. Increase the proportion of dollars that are spent in businesses owned by people of color including Native American and other groups who are undercapitalized or underrepresented. Ensure that informal purchasing processes are equal, are equal using businesses owned by people of color, Native American and underrepresented groups. Um, ensure that contracts given to businesses owned by non-DBEs, um, particularly white men, have targets for subcontracting and employment that benefit people of color. Some of those strategies are looking at the current data, data the dollar amounts and in informal purchasing, and set ambitious targets for future years in that outreach and engagement part. Uh, do vendor outreach and develop vendor uh, lists. Assess the current procurement practices and remove barriers. Educate purchasing departments about options available and advantages, and partner with local nonprofits, trade associations, and others to help in outreach and engagement. And I think that is pretty much it. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, that's it. That, 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 uh, Madam Chair, this is Edward. That was just very good. Thank you very much for the work on that. Um, I, I will say though that um, it's it's kind of sad that you're asking them to do what they're supposed to be doing, you know, in that regard. And when you you have so much historical underutilization, we sometimes get caught in the reframe of asking them to not do anything special, but just follow the law, and right, right, this seems like some kind of special request. 
it's almost like we're at the stage right now on affirmative action is any vacancies within side of the Met Council should go to protected group people in order to address historical underutilization. Um, that that should be their priority, and that would be legally permissible if you just simply did a review to show that there is um, gross underutilization based on job categories within the Met Council, and therefore over a period of time, and I think um, it would be legally permissible to say that all vacancies would be filled by protected group individuals where underutilization exists within the job category. On contract procurement, um, 35 years and three major disparity studies show gross underutilization when there is enough willing, able, and available businesses within uh, minority communities. Um, and uh, we're still practicing a race-neutral approach that's not yielding um, the parity that should be achieved. So you can almost now use, uh, recommend that we move to a race, disability, and gender conscious contracting approach where you set quotas and they would be legally permissible based on the 35 years and three major disparity studies where documentation exists. I can live with this, but it requires right now in this climate and because the Met Council and all governments would have a compelling reason with COVID-19 and with uh, historical underutilization of willing, able, and available minority business enterprises could go to a race conscious approach. <laughs> for a short period of time, uh, limited duration, uh, where they are um, targeting that money by particular race, disability, and gender groups, and uh, only allowing folks from those groups to compete against each other for those contracting opportunities. And I think it would be legally permissible because of historical underutilization of protected group members in the workforce to say, all vacancies at this point in time will only go to protected group members in job categories where there's underutilization. That's where we are at this time. I appreciate what's in this and I do understand it, but we've been conditioned to uh, ask for something special, some special consideration, which is kind of what this language says, and Really, this language is what should have been done all the, all along. Uh, and I can accept it if that's where the committee want to go, but I like to involve myself in this committee. And But I think we're at a point where uh, the request is that they have to be intentional uh, and purposeful in uh, bringing um, protected group communities into the workforce and vacancies that currently exist and targeting uh, those groups, setting up quotas for utilization of um, minority business enterprises and women business enterprises and dis disabled business enterprises because they have grossly underutilized them based on their own analysis uh, that are there and case law back up them being able to move in that direction and it would be legally permissible. That's not radical. That's 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 achieving. The well, if I might jump into that, I think that um, there are many many uh, uh, things that can be done, thinking outside of the box, and uh, definitely that this is the time to to do that and have that perspective um, that what. What has been done in the past obviously hasn't worked. So uh, I'm not sure about whether or how this can be implemented, but definitely it's worth looking into it. Ways that, again, might sound radical, but are actually just the Met Council using all the tools that it has available. 
uh, at its disposal at, at a, as at its disposal in order to address the the obvious and glaring disparities. So, what I will suggest is to keep those suggestions coming, and also we will I will personally will make sure that that we have um, you know at least some some feedback from from the council as to what they think is allowed or can be done and what isn't and the reasons why it might not be possible if, if they say it isn't. So uh, I will I will definitely like to forward any and all suggestions of how to proceed and then we'll we'll go from there. Well, thanks Edward. Uh, uh, Go ahead, Sai. I'm sorry. And so, uh, co-chair, if I may, I have some input that I can offer here. Yeah. This is Sai Jordan, the Director of Equal Opportunity. And so, uh, these are some great comments that you have um, here today. One of the questions I would ask is what kind of support that you had from our office as you went through some of these items. This is the work of the Office of Equal Opportunity in large part. Some of these certainly uh, are in the, the wheelhouse of our partners, but we work closely with them, whether it be the procurement office and the human resources. So we do have these goals set internally. We can provide you with the history of where we've been and where we're going and how we're going to continue to grow in this work and uh, move it forward to real impact and some sustainable change. And so we could be, well, we are partners and could be working collectively with you on even uh, some of the areas that you've identified here. Much of this work is ongoing, and so we could provide some information to you about what that looks like and what additional input you might have of, of what's already in place. And so if that is coming to a subcommittee and working through that, um, reaching out to me directly to talk about what the work of OEO is and what is happening within these areas, whether it be affirmative action or DBE and income, <clears throat> excuse me, we could certainly provide that information to you and then certainly have your feedback on what it looks like moving forward. Okay. I'm not sure if you presented these to someone else or if it's just a list internally that you created, but we're here to work collectively. Okay. Leah, did you want to say anything? Yeah, I'll say that, um, and Anita and Juliana, if you want to add anything to this, we sure. developed these, um, I think it was over a year ago that we developed these ideas at a time when the EAC was really exploring how to best have influence and understand more how to work with um, the offices. At that time, we hadn't really clarified. Um, we knew that there was a need for collaboration. We knew that there's offices at the Met Council that work in these areas, but we really hadn't clarified how that um, relationship um, would be and then also where the opportunities for influence for the subcommittee are. Um, we had had, by the time we came up with these ideas, some presentations about the current statistics but not, um, but very limited opportunities to give input and feedback around strategies or opportunities. And so I, I really appreciate, um, Sai, you mentioning that we could work closely with you because I think that hadn't, um, we hadn't found those opportunities prior to, to developing these strategies. And Anita or Juliana, I don't know if you'd add anything to that. No, you're correct in that. We've had this, we've had, we worked, on this, and I, I think it's it's over a year old, really, that we've really had an opportunity to um, redo it. We basically basically we've been um, kind of waiting for all the other groups to catch up to where we were because we already had our our strategies, our plans, and our goals laid out. So I mean, it's a it's a work in progress. In in you know. Um, in response to Mr. McDonald, I hear what you're saying, but at the time when we were doing this, um, it's clear to me that this work should have been done, and I think it's clear to most of us that this should have been a given, and we wouldn't have had, we shouldn't have to write down 
this um, so clearly. It should uh, be work that's already been occurring. But now that the office is re rolled out and we've got their memo and we've heard some of the changes, I think that can change some of the wording that we have on this plan as part of the strategic plan that we have for our group, the EAC, um, to move further on this. I think now that they've got more oversight, some of the wording um, on this should already be happening. And when I heard the report tonight of some of their, their um, changes, then I brought to mind that some of the language that we have currently in here could probably be changed now. So I think, you know, um, more once we move past this meeting, our subcommittee can get back together and with some of the folks to make counsel and, and rework this language again. If you're okay with that, Leah, Julie, Julia. That makes sense. Yes, yeah, makes sense, Anita. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure, thanks. I think we're done, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, any other comments or suggestions regarding uh, the last um, priority or any of the other priorities? And you can always, of course, uh, send any any suggestions that you might have or comments um, to Nalima and, and I or I. So we can um, do this. Mr. Chair, I have a comment. This is Sarah. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I guess after hearing these um, priority proposed work plan priorities, I I think it's important to acknowledge the evolving dynamic between the EAC and the um, Met Council staff. And I will be the first to admit that I'm still one of the newer members of the EAC, so I can't really um, fully speak to this, but I just understand that, especially with the changes that Sai um, shared today, I just, um, from my seat, I see that in the past, the EAC has wanted to um, strive for the same types of things as the OEO, but also has kind of operated in parallel with that work and not necessarily as connected or supported or as a kind of a joint effort. And um, I just want to recognize that there's opportunities, I think, to, you know, certainly still be on our own and set our own agenda, but at the same time, uh, when it's appropriate to really kind of um, recognize those opportunities for greater alignment. Thank you. Madam Chair. This is Edward. Go ahead. Go ahead, Edward. Go ahead, Edward. Um, um. Anyway, um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay. So, I, you know, I don't want uh, the committee to take offense to uh, or, or think that what they put here isn't value. I think that there's a lot of value to that. Um, and so, um, and I do understand the advantages or disadvantage of not you know, reviewing Mason Tillman 1999 disparity report or MGT America in 209 or the most recent keen disparity report, which includes um, uh, analysis of the Met Council's uh, contract procurement activities and how communities of color or um, are, are faring inside of that. Uh, in addition, uh, or the Hall Fondin Gala analysis, affirmative action analysis that was done in 2016 that 
also took a look at um, the gross underutilization of qual well-qualified uh, people of color in the community. Uh, but I just, but I guess I want to say, in addition to that, is that you hear this narrative inside of government about making progress with our community. We're making progress in utilizing more of them in contract procurement. We're, we're making progress in hiring this plethora of qualified persons of color in the community in order to achieve equity and inclusion, which is really just an analytical framework to uh, a strategy for compliance with equal opportunity and affirmative action, and also the enforcement of our protections under the state human rights law or Article I of the state constitution. The, the point is, the issue is compliance, not making progress, or we have a program or strategy in place. There are enough qualified professionals of color in the community, more than enough that can fill positions within the Met Council. There are more than enough qualified business enterprises that can fill up the underutilization gap. Um, and uh, uh, with contracting with the Met Council. So we should not accept anything less than compliance with the law. That's it. Otherwise, if we're accepting progress, we're leaving our community behind and you're leaving it to the discretion of people who may not necessarily have our interests at heart inside of there. And quite frankly, 30 years worth of analysis and reports show that they don't. And I'm not trying to be mean here, but though the law is the law is the law. The law says you must be in compliance. It doesn't say you should make progress towards this. So that's an a unacceptable proposition. I respect the language in here, but somehow we have to, around affordable housing, fair housing laws, uh, around these equal opportunity laws and affirmative action laws, we have to expect that our goals and objectives are absolute compliance, because when you have absolute compliance, then you're, you're eliminating socioeconomic disparities for the folks who are disproportionately represented in that, in that group. So, um, so as we think about this, think about not making progress with our community, but in compliance with utilization of our community. And the laws have been on the books for the past 60 years. So this is not anything new. It's just that we've not had people inside there, and it seemed like that's changing, and I agree with the speaker before, that there's new staff coming in that want to forge ahead uh, with aligning with this work and making it happen, uh, but they do have the protection of the law to bring it into compliance. That's all I have to say, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, thank you for your comments. Um, I mean, thank you for your comments, uh, Edward. Um, I think so this is a fast step at the at the work plan, and I think uh, appreciate your comments. And I think in general, it's about uh, you know putting for the proposal. Okay, so as a committee, bearing that in mind. So, what are some um, you know, strategies or some actionable steps that if, say, if we, the committee was to act on those, what would be the, you know, the actionable steps that we could take to bring those, you know, to bring those things to bear so that the, uh, so that the committee could, you know, could work on those if, you know, if the, if the committee so chose to do that. Excuse me, Madam Chair, it looks like Leah has her hand up and then also Sarah does. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not like, seeing this hands Okay, go ahead, Leah, and Thank then you. we'll have Leah and Sarah. Go ahead, Leah. That is a legacy hand up that I don't know how to put down, so it's not me. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Thank okay. you, Leah. Sarah, do you have your hand up? I do. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> um, I just want to um, agree with what Edward shared regarding the use of um, underutilized groups in hiring and, and procurement and contracting practices. But I will also say that um, for me, that's not, that's not enough. And, and that may be compliance with the law, but also to me, that is not equity, that's affirmative action. And so respectfully, 
I um, just disagree with saying that that's what we fully should be going for because the truth of it is is that tomorrow the Met Council could hire 5, 50, 500, 5,000 people of color into their workforce and um, without further work on the internal culture of the government, on the way that processes occur within that government, on the way that whose voice matters, on the way that all kinds of things, um, those processes are still going to enforce systems that have been around forever and that really marginalize the people that were actually, I mean, like people like me, probably people like, you know, many of the people who are on this committee. And so respectfully, while I think there's certainly um, a call for holding the Met Council to that higher standard, I also would encourage the committee to pursue this sense of um, how we can assist the Met Council in making that internal shift, which is necessary to actually retain that workforce and to shift the uh, way that government delivers for its people, including the people that we are here to represent and speak for. Thank you. Madam, Madam Chair, just real quick, and I really appreciate Sarah's comments and totally um, agree with her 100%. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, we can hear you, Edward, you have the floor, go ahead. I'm sorry, it's just that I've been cut off and dropped so many times, I'm not really sure if I'm just sitting here at home talking to myself, but thank you for letting me know you can hear me. Um, I agree with Sarah, 100%. And there are provisions within the state's affirmative action plan that talks about no regression on gains made to achieve um, um, uh, parity or uh, uh, address underutilization and furloughing, laying off, and all of those kind of things that are written inside that. So it does get at the fairness and equity issue. And I think what we're both saying is that um, both of those things should be occurring at the same time. Yes, let's, let's hire in the 5,000 people, but let's also continue to work on changing cultures inside there that really value uh, fairness and equity and inclusion and diversity. I don't think it's an either or proposition. I think you also need uh, to signal to uh, the community by hiring them, uh, those that are qualified to do the work, and in order to aid in changing that culture as well. So I agree with her 100%, and I think it's a duality issue. You do both of them because that's what the law requires you do, both of those and change culture at the same time. Uh, thank you for those comments, Edward. And uh, Lindice, I want to recognize your comments, and then I'm going to read them aloud, I guess, so that for the sake of transparency. So I'll uh, acknowledge your comment that says yes, more than enough, and that both can happen. I think you're agreeing that both can happen in tandem and acknowledging that affirmative action is needed to create previous discriminatory action. Thank you for your comments. Okay, well, I, uh, if there isn't any additional comments on, on the, uh, proposed work plan. I think we had some feedback, um, but I, I just want to make sure that we are capturing everyone's uh, suggestions and comments. Um, so anything else that we should add or modify on this draft? Um, if if not, we can just uh, move ahead. And what I will, what we will do is just do a final version, uh, and then circulate that amongst the the members. And hopefully, we can get this issued. I think our discussions with uh, Serentia had suggested that we should finish this in um, in January. And, and have it issue by February, if that's correct, Sai, what you had suggested. Well, Chair's I committee members, yes, we um, talked a little bit about what it yes. would look like to get you to the presentation to the council. 
as a whole of your work plan for 2021. And uh, normally that's done in the time frame of January and February. So we didn't know how long it would take you to work through these items and if you would have any follow-up discussion in January. But we want to make sure we get you on the agenda for February. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, let's see. Apologies, I do have one addition to that as well. Yeah. Um, you're looking for your next item. And so one of the um, additional uh, considerations for your uh, report out and update to the council would also be your highlights from 2020. So that will be another oh. area for you to work on as a group. Thank you. Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, okay. and so I think we usually do that at the, what do you call it, the standing committee, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. At least, yes, I'm building that at a standing committee and, yeah. Okay. Shall we move on to the next item on the agenda? Right. We should. Okay. Let's see. I think what we we're going to talk about, uh, what we we're going to talk about was uh, participation in the subcommittees. And oh, thank you. Filling <laughs> in each committee. I know it's not built on the agenda, but um, yeah, that was the next item for discussion. Yeah, as we have mentioned uh, or, or, or heard, in this latest conversation is that um, the subcommittees is where we hope to have a lot of the work of the EAC uh, done. Um, so I would definitely encourage everyone, uh, all the EAC members to to choose and, and join uh, any of the subcommittees that we have available. And, and that's where uh, the real um, input can be uh, the re your input can be most effective um is by working at the subcommittee level because obviously we we all cannot be experts in every uh subject matter experts in every area so definitely hopefully we can rely on the advice and suggestions of um the subcommittees on on how to move forward the general agenda of the EAC. So I definitely will encourage you to sign up. Those of you who haven't done it so far, sign up on, on a subcommittee and, and help with the work there. Um. So just to add on that, I, we, I think the other thing is that um, we have I think it's the vacancies on the for the ESC are posted um, right now, along with the other vacancies for uh, the other committees of the council, and so we should share those and especially encourage other folks to uh, to to get engaged. And I think one of the things we've discussed, I think, in previous standing committees is about, and one of the things we've tried to be, and I hope was reflected in the posting for the current vacancies, is I know in the past we have said, you know, the ESC commitment is just, you know, two hours, um, you know, for the faculty meeting, but that has proven not to be a reality, and so trying as much as possible to emphasize that uh, the expectation is that uh, folks will join a working subcommittee so that we can be able to move uh, the ESCs, you know, the ESCs work forward. I know in some of the standing committees we've talked about, um, you know, if that, if we if we can uh, spell that out to be a requirement of the ESC um, that, you know, that you do participate, uh, you know, in a, in a subcommittee based on priority areas because I think what we have learned is just, you know, the two hours uh, during the monthly meeting just doesn't cut it, especially if we want to uh, to move the work forward.
any um anything else uh Nalima that we wanted to to submit for consideration? No, I think that's it. Um I think uh, I believe Irina I think shared the link. Did you Irina, did you share the link with everybody for the ESC vacancies? Is that correct? I did. Wonderful. So if uh committee members can share those um uh, those uh vacancies uh with the, within their network that will that will be that will be great. So there are a couple of questions. One uh from Lenise, this couple of comments in the in the chat. Um okay. So I think uh, those are coming from Anita. So let's hope that all you will make it happen. But Lenise had a question. How will we get the ideas expressed tonight included in the plan? Um, I think we have taken notes and uh, update those, and then we will bring it. We will bring, uh, we will, this is a draft, we will bring this back to, we will share the updated plan with folks before uh, the January meeting and folks can continue uh, to give input uh, by email or even at this extending committee meeting. And then we will have a final discussion and hopefully adaptation for the 2021 plan at the January, uh, at the January 2021 meeting before presenting. Right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Edward. Um, you know, Leah, uh, well, actually, the the committee as a whole did some really good job, or did a really good job on our structure and the change in our structure. And if I remember right, there was a need for that approach to be approved by the council. Um, how we're structuring our operations is that something that no. the subcommittee do, or is that something that already has happened? As I, if I remember correctly, there was no need for the council to approve that. We approved it in the committee. Uh, I think we approved it in the committee with the updated changes, but uh, there was not uh, there was there was no requirement or a need for the council to uh, for the council to approve that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sure. And then I see your comment. You're willing to help on council policy subcommittee. Yes, I would love and to. What? Yes, I would love to. Do we have a a subcommittee for policy, council policy? Operations, I'm sorry. It should be council operations. Oh, okay. Just so sorry. Okay, wonderful. So the internal operations. So that will be with uh Anita Leah uh Juliana. Is that correct? So and um, Edward will be a fourth member. Wonderful. Anything else that we need to discuss? Because I believe we are at the end of the agenda. Yes, we are. Okay. Well, if not, uh, I think we can move ahead to uh, adjourn this meeting. So thank you very much, and my apologies for being late. Uh, again, technology hates me, so I had to struggle with this. And uh, I will definitely follow up with updating the draft and circulate that for your final input, and we'll go from there. All right. So thank you very much, and I'll. They officially declared this meeting adjourned. Thank you.